Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, today I'm going to do a video uh, just talking a little bit about the evolution or the history of us playing what, what is called non-positional defense. Um, it's more about hybrid training. It's more about cross-training players. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that video today is that if you just noticed on social media, after one of the spring practices, uh, they just had an interview with Coach Saban, and he got fired up talking about they don't have a depth chart right now. Their mics are playing wills and safeties are playing. I'll get into that in a little bit, but thought it was a, a, a good time to talk about why we started doing that. Remember to check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, the headwear uh, partner we have with PlayFest and the school I'm currently at. This is one of my original Dome Hats. All right, Their original hats established in 2006. Completely customizable. They have an online hat builder that you can go and generate and build your own hat with your logo, change the style, snapback, Velcro fitted, change the color of the panels, the buttons. Everything is customizable. Make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods, company I use, all right, a local sporting goods company I use for my coaching gear, my players gear, our spirit packs, they provide our uniforms. Anytime we do an online store for fans or uh, teachers or anything else, we use Baker Sporting Goods, so make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, which is digital software that will take your program to the next level. I use it to diagram plays when I'm going to speak uh, at, at clinics, uh, when I used to speak at Glacier Clinics, when I do webinars for my Patreon site or any other webinars that I do, I use uh, just play as my play uh, diagramming tool, but it's also a more powerful way to present things to your players. You can quiz your players on uh, playbooks and, and game plans and things so you get a better understanding of what your players actually know. So make sure you check out Just Play. Game Strat sideline replay system we use. Uh, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check them out. Customer friendly, great guys. Started in Canada. Uh, they We've had no problems with the with the technical end of the product, it's always been user error for the most part. A lot of people are making a switch. Check out GameStrat. Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine. And I'm, I'm kind of glad right now one of the founders of the product is currently working with the Jaguars, was hired by Urban Meyer, so I'm going to get a chance to spend a little bit more time or communicate more with him now that he's in town. It's the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps, elbows in, thumbs up. You don't need a partner. Make sure you check out Difference USA. And then high and tight ball security training aid. Uh, that you use with skill players or any players that have to carry the football. The ball has to be held in the proper position with the proper points of pressure. Each panel has a sensor. When everything is done correctly, you will hear an auditory beep. So you want your kids to do drills and, and be able to do an entire drill while hearing the beep. If they lose the beep during the drill, it's because they lost as they're running or doing whatever. Running backs have a tendency when they're making a move or taking on contact. Sometimes the elbow gets out. Sometimes the wrist gets low. All right, you got to have that ball up there to beat the entire time. Ball security is job security. You hear it's getting better. Make sure you check out high and tight. Okay, so Coach Saban went on this rant. All right, obviously, I think most of the things a lot of times with the media or at least his own media in Alabama, I think a lot of the rants he goes on are probably planned to send a message to players or somebody else, so I think it's almost staged or choreographed, but I love him to death when he does it. His point was a guy asked him about Mike Linebacker on a depth chart, and he said in the spring they do things a little bit differently. They play uh, left and right inside backers, left and right outside backers, left and right safeties, and they force those kids to learn both sides, so you know they may, however they're calling the strength or whatever, the the left linebacker may be the mic one time, but he may be the will the next time, and the left safety may be, you know, however they, depending on their packages, uh, you know, the left safety might be to the field one time, to the boundary to the next, and the left outside backer might be in coverage one time, but rushing the next. So the way he was explaining it was it allows them to get some things taught in a hybrid cross-training fashion. It allows them to evaluate their guys a little bit more. And then when they get to the fall, they feel like when it comes to the depth chart, they can put the next best available player in because they taught them to play both. So you got to remember sometimes as a coach, you make a depth chart and you put out your two deep and your three deep, but when somebody gets hurt, what is the goal as a coach? The goal is to put the next best player on the field. So think about this from an alignment perspective. All right. Now, I know sometimes it's tough if, if, if kids, you know, especially at the higher levels, they only play tackle or guard or whatever, but you think about it this way. If you got a too deep depth chart, all right, in, in high school at offensive line, and you've got a, a second guard, a second left guard, a second right tackle, a second left tackle. If somebody gets hurt, you want to put in your six best lineman. You don't want to necessarily just put in the backup to that position unless you feel good about all of them. So a lot of times in high school, what you got to understand is if somebody gets hurt, you got to put in the next best play. So it's the same thing on defense or whatever. If you get an inside backer hurt, 
Do you necessarily need to put the wheel in, or do you put the third best backer on the team in because he knows how to play both? And that was kind of Saban's argument of why they do it, why they do it that way in the spring. Keep in mind, another reason that they probably do it that way and can do it that way in the spring is the insulation in the spring is probably cut down to where the kids can learn that way. Once they get into the fall, they can't still teach it that way. It's got to be on a need and necessity basis. So then they'll figure out who's the best mic for them, who's the best Will, who's the best Sam or the best Jack or the best Strong or the best Free, whatever it is. But in the spring, it's interesting to hear that they teach it that way, and here's why. Anytime you have an idea or something you do, you always need some type of legitimacy to have people listen to what you're trying to say. So anytime the higher levels or the higher level coaches start doing certain things, more people are willing to listen to what you have to say. So when we originally started playing the 4-2-5 defense, we actually played it with a strong safety and a weak safety and a free safety. All right, and we actually played it with a mic and a will, and we played it with a three and a seven and a one and a five, and we traveled and we played it with a field corner and a boundary corner, and we traveled everybody, and we traveled our guys to strength and away from strength, and that's the original way we taught it, right? So back in the way I learned it, this might have been a strike, and this is a whip or a rover, all right? But we actually taught it that way, and then during that season, what started happening? Teams started trading the tight end on us. All right, so they would go ahead and line the tight, up, tight end up over here. And we started realizing that we, the weak safety couldn't play the coverage as the strong safety could. The one and the five weren't used to you know, playing possibly if we wanted to kick the front and make that side the three and the seven or the one and the five on the other side. So what we started figuring out is when we started getting trades, all right, when we started getting teams that would motion, we started finding out that we only had one check to FIB or formation into the sideline. Anytime teams would shift or trade, we got stuck in positions where our guys were on, on sides that they never played. They were on the strong side or they, you know, they had more receivers when normally we only teach them to be to the, to the, you know, the weak side or the side with less receivers. We don't involve them in our three-by-one checks. Teams were starting to line up trips into the boundary, forcing us to go into our uh, FSL or FIB check. So... After that first season, what I figured out was, and again, this is probably going back almost 10 years now, I figured out at least at the safety position, all right, I figured out that I better start training these guys as left safeties and right safeties, and I better start training them to be hybrid guys that can play what we call up and back, but also what we call read side and away. So we've talked about this several times on other videos. We have to teach a few more versions of coverages. So we've got to teach them how to be on the strong side or the read side. We have to teach them how to be on the away side or the weak side. So what we have to do is we, we kind of cut out as many coverages as we want to play, and we narrow the, 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 the menu or the composite down to the actual coverages we think we need with enough adjustments to be able to handle certain looks that you know we don't want to be stuck in one thing. But we got to cut our menu down a little bit because these guys have to learn how to play read side and away side. But here's the good deal. What ended up happening was we had, at least at the safety position, we had less alignment problems because they never traveled. They never moved. We didn't have to worry about ripping Liz calls for, for, the, for them moving. The only calls we had to make were the free safety declaring to the inside backers and the safeties which side he was on, which side was the read side because we were going to play certain calls for the read side and certain calls for the away side. So our communication had changed a little bit, but the one thing we found is we were better able to handle shifts, trains, motions, things of that nature, all right, simply because our guys were, were being cross-trained. They were being taught how to be hybrid players. Then we took it a step further, and we started doing it with the front six. And we started teaching the front six, so we, we started teaching guys how to be sevens or fives, all right? So if we go back to that pro diagram, we started teaching guys how to be sevens or fives, and then we started teaching guys how to be ones or threes. So what ended up happening was rather than change sides with our linemen, once the formation dictated itself, we then just kind of dictated where the three and the five, where the three and the seven, or the three and the five, or the one and the five. We just dictated where they were going to be based on the offensive strength, and we just moved the formation accordingly, and then you know, 
based on where they were lined up, the mic might be in the wheel's role, the wheel might be in the mic's role. Because what we started to find out was the mic and the wheel sometimes based on formations, motions, and adjustments, sometimes the wheel has to learn how to play to the three receiver side. And sometimes the mic has to learn how to play to the away or the cut side. And sometimes based in two by two sets, or sometimes you might get it, you know, a formation or a trade or a shift or a motion, where the mic and the wheel had to learn how to play each other's roles. So we started cross-training and teaching them each other's roles. Then we started cross-training the interior lineman, how to be ones and threes, how to be fives and sevens. Now, what you're, what you're going to end up, you know, the, here's the downside to that, at least from the D-line standpoint. There's guys that you really want to be the three, and there's guys that you really want to be the one. So what did we end up doing with the D-line? We ended up, all right, trying to keep the D-line to where they could line up, all right, to strength. So we still with the front six, all right, when it was all said and done, after we got through, we decided to leave the front six alone and still make our rip uh, our shut right, shut left calls, okay, with the linemen. So we still flip the linemen, but we cross-trained them so that they knew if at any time they got the formation the other way, all right, if we wanted to, they could, the anchor could play in a seven. He knew how to play in a seven. And the one knew how to play in a three, and the three knew how to play in the one. All right, so we taught them and cross-trained them how to do both just in case. And then we decided, since the front six were divorced from the back five, we decided to play left and right safeties, cross-train them, cross-train our mic and will, all right, because in certain passing coverages or formations or motions or shifts, they may end up having to play those coverages. So we decided in the offseason to cross-train the mic and will, cross-train the left safety and the right safety. Then we started to rotate the free safeties and the safeties, and we started to teach them all three safety spots once we got some older kids, all right, and, and we developed a little bit more. And we just got more and more into the deal of hybrid training, non-positional defense, all right? Really, the, the, from, from the big boy term, non-positional kind of means like guys that can play outside linebacker, but they can rush and they can cover and they can do different things because what, what starts to happen, at least at the college game, when the tempo gets ramped up and the offense doesn't change personnel and the defense can't change personnel, whatever personnel group you got on the field is going to have to learn how to play multiple personnel groups so you needed to get players that could do some different things. So maybe your starting weak side five technique was a little bit smaller so that against certain personnel groups, he could be a guy that drops. Maybe you call him a bandit or something like that or whatever you call him. But when you go to your even fronts, he's your weak side five technique. That is you know, kind of the term of non-positional defense or hybrid player defense. And, and Jay Bateman at, at West Point, when he was at Army, now he's in North Carolina, when they almost beat Oklahoma two or three years ago, some of the stuff they were doing really caught fire, and guys started learning. It's a little bit better way to play tempo. It's a little bit better way to get some things in your package where no matter what happens, you're comfortable because you've taught your guys how to play that. Now, at the high school level, the downside to that is sometimes you got to take your packet, your menu, your package, your composite, and you got to shrink it a little bit. That's the only downside. Then where we really evolved to was when we went to a 3-3 stack team, all right, we evolved for a simplicity sake, we evolved into a right and a left defense. So we evolved into a team that played a nose, we played an end on the left and an anchor on the right, we played a line, a mic, and a ram, never moved, we played a left safety, a right safety, and a free safety, free safety was the only one that traveled, we played a left corner and a right corner. So our defense now became a group where only one player traveled. All right, talking about base defenses now, not talking about other packages or, or man defense where you got to go to the other side. Just talking about base defense. Only one guy traveled. The other ten could just line up where they belong. And then what started happening was we were able to line up fast. Less line, less alignment problems, okay? Did we have to, uh, you know, kind of evolve after that when I had some, like, my Division One defensive end? Yeah, we moved him into the boundary sometimes. We played him away. But we taught our entire package this way. And then when we started teaching stunts and pressures, we taught them from a left side standpoint and a right side standpoint and a middle standpoint. All right, and then we just word associated everything. So things that came from the left, so America's blitz from the left might have been laser, and America's blitz from the right might have been rocket, okay? And then if we had an inside pressure, 
You know, for whatever reason, our inside pressures, we might have had a six-man inside pressure, okay, and, and you know, we might have called it loco from the, from the left, but we called it rock from the right. And within those blitz patterns, the kids always knew that if they were on the left, this is the pattern. If they were on the right, this is the pattern. We never had to worry about saying, okay, now look, if we have rock or laser on, or I'm sorry, or laser rocket, or lo loco river, loco, whatever it is, all right, if you don't like rock because it sounds like rocket. All right, so we had loco, and then we you might have, let's just say, Let's go River Lake for lack of a better term. Okay? So let's just say River Lake for lack of a better term. We never had to say that based on a personnel change or a formation into the boundary that the, the lake blitz went to river and now the, 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 the long sticker had to switch and be a container and the contain guy had to switch and long stick and the, and the backers. We never switched it. If we were coming from a pressure from the left, we brought the pressure from the left. If it was coming from the right, we brought it from the left, from the right. If it was coming interior, we brought it interior. And that's how we taught it. And then what we did was when we started the game plan, we took our tendencies based on field, boundary, left, right, strong, weak. And that's how I would send my pressures. If the ball was on a certain hash and I wanted to bring the pressure from the field, it was a left side blitz. If the ball was in the middle and I wanted the pressure in the middle or whatever, they had a tendency of running to their right eight times out of ten and I wanted to bring the pressure from my left, or if they had a tendency of going to their left, which is my right, that's how I made my call sheet, and that's how I called my down and distance and my tendencies. What it got us to is it got us to a point where we started hybrid training. We, we taught these three guys how to play all three spots, all right, and in the spring. As we got further, the only guy we left alone was the Mike, and we told the Lion and the Ram, we want them to be able to play both. The patterns match each other, so if it's America's Blitz from the left, the guy on the right might be a three dropper or whatever coverage we're playing. All right, but the backer on the left has a, let's say, a B gap blitz. It's the same track from the right, so now as a backer, you just need to understand if you're to the call, you B gap blitz. If you're away, you're a three dropper or a hook to curl or a cut two or whatever coverage we were playing or a man guy. All right, so we were able to teach the patterns that way so that we were able to cross train the line and the rim, cross train the end and the anchor, and the only guys we kind of left alone were the nose and the mic, and we made those almost standalone positions that we tried to train certain guys just to play those spots because our mic was a spy he didn't drop in our coverages so we tried not to overwhelm the mic with everything that the lion and the ram might do but we had to cross train the lion and the ram because if you're not going to move sides and you don't know where the strength is you have no idea what side you're going to be on in coverage so the lion and the ram they all had to know read side coverages away side coverages and i think that's the point that coach saban's getting to in his rant is he's starting to talk about if we can teach them how to play both sides all right, and we can cross train them, and we can get them to be hybrid players. We can eventually figure out who our best mic is, and our best will is, and our best personnel is. If we get injuries in the fall, we can get our next best player on the field because we've taught them to play that way. Will they eventually in the fall get to specific players and packages? Of course they will. It's Division One. It's Alabama. It's Nick Saban. They don't get exactly what they want, but by doing it this way in the spring, it allows them to evaluate guys a little bit more, see some guys in different roles, teach guys how to be on both sides, teach guys how to learn a little bit differently to be on both sides, all right? And, and you know, for us, it just, you know, it legitimizes or it gives some validity to the point that we've been doing this with some of our players for years in high school, all right? And, and whether people like it or not, or whether it's for you or not, is your call, but we've been doing it for years in high school, but I think now, on top of the Jay Bateman stuff and some of the you know the college stuff that guys have been doing with hybrid players, non-positional defense, Nick Saban coming out and saying it now gives it validity. So now all of a sudden there's going to be more people that want to investigate that style or at least listen to that style of play because Nick Saban does it in the spring. That's the way the world works. That's the way our game works. As soon as you see it done by one of those guys, it's like, you know, I heard uh, – and one, somebody that was coaching Tom Brady at one point as a quarterback coach or whatever, and he said, hey, our reads never go past the center with Tom Brady in the NFL. So once he chooses what side he's on, he almost never progresses past the center. Some people didn't believe it. Some people said, you're crazy, you can't do that. Whatever the idea is, once somebody up here at this level gives it legitimacy, validates it, now it makes it a point that everybody you know, is willing to listen to. So thanks to Coach Saban for coming out in that press conference. I know it had nothing to do with uh, you know, how me or, or other people play defense. It had nothing to do 
uh, with play fast football. It had nothing to do with you know anything but the fact that he was trying to prove a point to a reporter to say that I don't need you to give you a depth chart right now and tell you who the mic is so that you have something to write about. This is what we're doing. All right, I read it and I say, hey, that's what we've been doing out of necessity. That's what we've been doing out of simplicity. They just take it to another level, but we've been doing that, and now because Coach Saban says it, I think it brings more validity and legitimacy to the argument that, hey, you can get away playing this way. You can get away doing that. You don't need a strong safety and a weak safety. You can play left and right. You might even be able to do it in high school with the mic and the will. You can play with guys that are mics and wills. You can play with guys that are ones and threes. A lot of people have been doing it. A lot of people do it really well. All right, I'm not the first one. I'm not the only one. I get my ideas from other places just like everybody else, but I do know that when it happens up here by the big boys and probably by the best to ever do it, all of a sudden it takes notice and people go, hey, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so I'm so glad somebody posted that on Twitter. I'm so glad Football Scoop ran with that. Um, hats off to Football Scoop for running with that article and, and making it a point because I think it's a very valid point for people to look at and understand that you can play non-positional defense, you can cross-train kids, you can play with hybrid kids that can play both. A lot of people have been doing it for a long time, and it's actually a pretty good idea. Remember, if you don't subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn your notifications on. You know every time I do a video or I go on YouTube live, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like this or don't like this, either way it lets me know All right, what to change, the content you like, or my presentation, or what you don't like. If you don't like that I say okay or all right 15 times, give it a thumbs down. It doesn't hurt. Me at all, it's just better interaction. Leave a comment. Every comment that I see, I try to respond to. If it's a comment about a video, and I feel like I can do that video justice, I'll do it. If you're playing football right now in the spring, good luck to you. It's possible we finish the season in the fall in Florida. A lot of other states do it too. Good luck to you. Keep working hard. If you're getting ready for spring ball, good luck to you. Stay safe, stay healthy. Appreciate what you do for me and play fast football. I will catch you guys next time.